The word Devi in Sanskrit means the one who makes you aware of things. Divyate Prakashate Anaya Iti Devi. By her is lighted up the whole thing. It's not the light that we normally think of, but it is the light which makes the light and darkness also seen. So what is that Jyotisham Jyotihi? And that is only consciousness. You go to sleep, where is this world? The consciousness is not there, the world is not there. So consciousness lights up the whole world and that is the concept of Devi. The Divine Mother is the source. The worlds come out of her, exist because of her, and then return back into her. She is the stage upon which the play of the world goes on. She is wisdom, bliss and consciousness incarnate. Consciousness is the mother or the womb from which the whole material world appears. The father is transcendent. It can't be seen, it can't be known, it just exists. The mother is the main principle of the, the manifesting and becoming aware is the womb from which the whole thing has come. The Kamakya, the womb of the universe. Everything has come from that womb. Aham Rudre Virvasabhisharami Aham Aditya Rutha Vishwadehi. I am all the Rudras. I am all the Aditya, the sons. I am all the earth elements. So we see the goddess, not only in the human beings, but in rocks, in mountains, in rivers, in trees, in serpents, and in birds. See, in all these things we see the, the manifestation of the, the transcendent, uh, and becoming manifest and becoming the goddess. So our goddess is uh, not limited to a uh, human figure or anything like that. This is the story of a most unusual man who dedicated his entire life to the goddess. He gave up a successful career as a nuclear physicist to build a city dedicated to Devi. One day it will be said that a great scientist who had built his entire life on the rational ideas of science discovered the goddess. She transformed him completely and showed him how to live with the irrational and to bring the joy of discovering the sacred feminine into everyone's life, regardless of gender, caste, creed, nationality or lifestyle. A man who dedicated his life to awakening human beings to their greatest potential. A man who wanted everyone to be happy. I am in the business of happiness. If I exist, it should make everybody happy. That's, that's my purpose of life. Gana na am
गणपति हवामहे कवि कवीना उपमश्रवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पद आन शृण्वन्ोतिदन श्री महागणाधिपत नम हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ Guruji Amritananda was born Prahlada Sastri in 1934 in the port city of Vishakhapatnam in southern India. His parents Narasimha Rao and Lakshmi Narsayamma were staunch Gandhians. His father was the first commercial photographer of the city. He was the teacher of all the photographers in Vaisa. <laughs> he had a photo studio where he used to develop films. My father was a Gandhian. You know, uh, he used to spin his own uh, cloth and we used to wear them. He was a very practical man. He had a practical quest and a curiosity Uh, for things which reflect in everything that he did that i carried through that was that was there in my genes by the age of 5 pralada was seeing mystical patterns and signs in nature around him i used to see the divine figures in as patterns in the leaves of trees and i used to hear the hear the, the music being played and i used to hear the, the flute and i used to see krishna and uh, small girls play, playing and all these things were um, uh, were patterns uh, in the environment i could not show it to anyone but i used to see them at the age of 11 everything changed for pralada and looking at the sky and i saw um, suddenly some large globules coming uh, and at me coming at me and entering me coming at me and entering and i was afraid and i made i fell became unconscious i think it was my first experience of my samadhi it was wrongly diagnosed as a physical ailment and treated wrongly i was not seeing any more of the spiritual experiences and i lost interest in that and then i had to wait for this uh, my 47th year or so till my uh, the i had to go through this uh, the drill of science following this experience Pralada lost all interest in spirituality and became a dedicated student of science at Avian College. He then went on to do his BSc at Andhra University and his master's degree under the tutelage of the legendary nuclear physicist Swami Gyanananda, who was a renowned uh, sage. He moved in Himalayas for about 18 years naked. And there are three of us who did the BSc honors together. Joined him for MSc. He invited us to his place for a tea, and I saw the picture of this, uh, the Kundalini and his chakras and so on. I asked him, "What is this? Oh, you are interested in this? So it will catch up with you sometime later, not now." <laughs> he recognized the the spark of divinity in me, and he told me that it will you will come back to it later, not now. On August 2nd, 1957, Pralada married Annapurna Gunturu. He was 23 and she was 16. See when we about 11, about 10, 11. She came once to my house. She was 5 at that time, 5 years old. And she was reading uh, uh, some stanzas from some book called Rukmini Kalyanam. I liked the way she was reading and i liked her and i made up my mind at that time that i'll marry this girl so when the the suggestions for marriage came uh, i said i already set my mind on the on the girl i want to marry and i i told my father and mother that i'm going to get this uh, marriage girl and I'm, i'm not looking at any other girl she was a pretty young thing at that time <laughs> and i fell in love with her 
but I, the, the stage, it was strange, I think it is arranged by the goddess that uh, I should marry a person. And uh, love at that age is not normal. It must have been predetermined in some way or other. Amma, as she later became lovingly known, was a rock in his life and became his constant companion in all his journeys through personal, scientific and spiritual quests. She had to face the struggles with me physically, financially, spiritually, all these things. So she had to find the right partner for me. Guruji and Amma had three daughters, Ananta Lakshmi, Radha and Rama, or as Guruji liked to call them, his three goddesses. Okay? Dad, on your birthday, I just want to thank you for everything you have done for me. And uh, inside, lots of things are there. Lots of things are there. <laughs> Treats and hearts and snacks. Uh, Happy birthday, so lots of love, overflowing with the Devi's blessings, best wishes, Jyoti. Love you, Daddy Rama. Lots of love, Ananta. Lots of love and hugs to Tataya, Pallavi. Happy birthday, Tataya. Vishku. Dearest Daddy. And, and Radha, you say and, your message. And dearest Mummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay. Now what you need to do is, that this is a hamper, so mm. we've tried to put some different things into it. Okay. What you need to do is close your eyes mm. and you have to remove one by one and mm. then tell us what it is mm. and then you can open your eyes. Okay. okay. No, 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 it's okay. You'll do it. Close your eyes. Now put your hand mm. in and, okay, now He's take that, take that eyes. out. Now take that out. Mm. Okay. So what's that? Taco dinner kit. So the taco dinner kit is mm. because he will love everything, uh, you know, fried, spicy. fried, fried and, and spicy, and crunchy, and, spicy. And, crunchy spicy. and especially different kinds of cuisines. I love food. I like, I uh, love relish, relishes actually. <laughs> yes, this is one which I thought, and Amma actually was reading it yesterday. Children are inclined to take their dad for granted. But today, we want to give you all the thank yous for all the things we did together when we were very small, for the laughter and the patience and the quiet comfort. Thank, thank you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for remembering all these things and putting it in paper. <laughs> the most important. Yes. <laughs> hmm. My lover. <laughs> Mm. There you go. <laughs> and I think Sama, that is she. <laughs> For a few years, we, can, we couldn't get a proper house and all. So afterwards, we are okay. But wherever he is, I am happy. That's all. That's my... Constant companion. Even he wants to resign his job also, I never said no. Okay, wherever you go, I follow with, him, with our kids. That's it. In 1956, Pralada Sastri was offered a place at the prestigious Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Bombay. The institute was founded by the father of Indian nuclear physics, Homi Bhabha, and was home to India's leading scientific minds. During his tenure at the Tata Institute, he completed his PhD thesis at Bombay University in quantum physics. His work was recognized as advanced theoretically, but something inside him wanted to work in applied sciences. I asked, what is the worth of this paper that we have done? What is the what, what practical use? And I thought, okay, I must apply my ideas to some applica applied science, not uh, pure research. It must be, have some practical value, it must do something good for the people. So, doing something good for the happiness yeah. of the, that is there at the back of the mind, it is there, the spiritual uh, curiosity and driving force were, were that. On a work-related visit to Hyderabad in 1978, Guruji had a most unusual and divine experience that would prove to be the turning point in his life. I woke, got up at 4 o'clock and started walking blindly. And I found some steps going up to the 
in the Naubat Pahad in uh, Hyderabad. Early morning, about 4.30, 5 o'clock in, in that morning. And I saw the, the Bala Murthy there in front. There's an old man in front of me who prostrated before me. That somehow acted as a trigger for me. I used to question, ah, once I became a scientist, it was a spirit, scientific arrogance was there. So what is this? This has no meaning. And at that time, I prostrated for without knowing what I was doing. I had a thrill going through my body. So that excitement of seeing the goddess was heart pollution all over the body and I was seeing a vision of the Bala Tripasundari in, in my mind side. And then I came back and I started thinking, maybe I'm missing out something on uh, uh, ignoring the spiritual aspect. And that was the transformation point. Guruji contemplated the way forward and a part of him remembered how he used to see divine patterns and hear divine sounds as a child. I remember my younger days. I was getting those experiences, I was able to talk to God and say, God, God says, I used to play with them, what happened to all that? Ah, I used to mm, remember there was a sound going inside my heart. It was Anahata, about 300 hertz. It's kind of somehow connected with the background radiation coming from the Big Bang. I was curious as to what is happening here. Guruji began to sit and meditate for the first time in over 35 years. He began by listening to the sound within him. After hearing that sound, I used to go down and see where is that sound coming from. I go down, 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 the frequency keeps going down. At the lowest place, you are like a throbbing of the 10 cycles per second. And then when it comes to here, it used to feel like a little warmth. This was para and pashanti. And this is Madhyama. And then it, it, it goes up in frequency and becomes Vaikhari. The branch that comes out through the mouth and the branch that experiences light. Finally, after a few days of intense meditation and listening, Guruji had a dramatic breakthrough. So I started sitting on, on my bed in the middle of the night. I used to wake up and uh, my wife was lying next to me. and. I used to sit and meditate. I used to hear that. And after some time, I blanked out. I did not know. I became unconscious. And suddenly there was an explosion. As if you know, a bomb has been placed in my heart. And a huge emanation of light came. I felt I was being, bits and pieces of me were being thrown out to the ends of the galaxies. A ball of light, a huge explosion of light, the great sound, kind of things. Maybe like a big bang. I was afraid that maybe I'm dying. So what is this? Uh, happening. Can meditation lead to death? If I die, who is going to look after my wife and who is going to look after my children, who is going to provide for them? I stopped doing meditation. But after one week, I started arguing with myself. But I did not die, did I? So then, I, I decided to continue the, with the meditation. And this time, it was not like this. It was a different experience. The experience was, I felt some small um, vibration-like things started at the base of the root chakra and then started coming, something started coming up. As it was coming up, I felt a, a warm tingling sensation. And when it was going up in between, I had this arousal. This pleasant arousal was there. Then when it came here, it was becoming a little warm. When it came here, it was the familiar Madhyama. But when it started moving from here to here, it became like a, like a roar of a volcano. And I was feeling I was sitting on top of a volcano, and there's a huge rush of lava coming out and pushing me out of myself.
At that time, I prayed to Saraswati. I said, Saraswati Namastu Bhim Varade Kamarupani Vidyarambam Karshyam Siddhirbhavad Mesa The stand-up which I used to recite when I was a child. Padma Patra Visharakshi Padma Kesa Varni Nityam Padma Vira Devi Samam Pal Saraswati. Then she appeared with in front of me. I asked her, what is it? What's happening to me? And she said, I'm giving an experience, take it. What, ex what experience? <laughs> I am being a, like a tiger is sitting on me and you are telling me not to be afraid. It's not possible. She said, don't worry. I'm going to give you some experiences. You take them and you, you learn through the experiences. And there will be a few uh, blocks in you which stop you from being who you are. And uh, you will have some terrible experiences in the beginning, but they will gradually fade away. And then you will be having better interactions with me. With that assurance in hand, and she said, if you, if you are ever in trouble, think of me and I will be there for you. In the year following, Saraswati Devi began to give Guruji not just tremendous experiences but also information from another dimension and reality. He was able to download entire scriptures and patterns all into his mind's eye and later verify them at the library in Bombay. After the explosion, there's a, a, something like a white screen in front of my eyes. And that screen had uh, some letters, Sanskrit letters written on that. And, uh, and there were about uh, 20 lines there. Before I could read the first, uh, half of the first line, which was, Isha was Simidam Sarvam. Then the thing vanished. It was too fast. It was, I didn't know it was Isha was Upanishad. But then I started getting visions of the Goddess. She used to say, you should, you should learn more, study these books. She used to give me books to read. I used to uh, say, uh, take those books, read them in, in the mind. I used to learn Sanskrit when I was very young, from the age of five to about uh, 11 or so. It, at that time, I got interested in spiritual science and I joined the Bombay University Library, which was uh, uh, YMCA. I used to go there and pick up some books. It, invariably, it used to happen. It was the book which I read, read before. In my meditation, I, when I pick up, it is there. And the first book I pick, picked up was Isha Vasya Upanishad. And then my scientific mind started crumbling. It, it was never under my control. I cannot invoke it by myself. And when I, not even when I'm meditating, just someplace I'm sitting and closing my eyes, it is there. And I had to enjoy what I see. The construct of rationality that Guruji had built his entire scientific life on began crumbling away and step by step Devi was giving him information and experiences that were beyond space and time, beyond matter and energy and could only be described as universal consciousness. And then a thought came to me, why should God be rational? Why can't he be irrational? So, I started pursuing on that line of argument, which is not, which is not the scientific <coughs> enquiry anymore. It is a different kind of enquiry. Being open to irrationality. We are doing Gayatri Homam. And since we did the Dattatreya Pratishtha in the morning, we will be doing 108 times Dattatreya Homa and then Ayusha Homa. And today happened to be my birthday, so I decided to do the Ayusha Homa. And there are some sponsors here, who are going to sit here. And they will have Kalasham, into the Kalasham, they will be putting Panchamrutas. And the results of the Homa will be put into this Kalasham. At the end of it, they will take them to the top of Sahasrakshyama and they will have to take them to the 
the main god is there, Adi Shishakra.